at the end of the game, after he'd made a speech, after they'd all run over to the hill, it was clear that Stephen Cluxton did a, a lap of honour. I don't know if he's done it every year, but certainly everybody's interpreting it now as some kind of sign that perhaps, perhaps maybe, the Stephen Cluxton era is over. Roy Began is with us this morning to give us a goalkeeper's perspective on all this. Roy, good morning to you. How are you doing? Good morning. Uh, I'm doing my best. How are you? Yeah, great. Um, so look, we're, we're trying to put some context on the career that Stephen Cluxton has had. Um, people are claiming he's the most influential Gaelic footballer of his generation and who knows, maybe of all time. Uh, how important was Cluxton as somebody that you kind of looked at and watched and saw what he was doing when you were coming through as a goalkeeper? Yeah, he was obviously a huge influence on myself um, coming through. Um, and as I say, most goalkeepers will tell you the same, but I imagine most managers will tell you that too. Like they've started to base their their clubs, their teams around around what Stephen Cluxton has done, what what Dublin have done in regards to goalkeeping in terms of kickouts and so on. And I think that is probably up the uh, the class of goalkeepers now these days. And um, I've I've watched him. I watch him closely in games. Just to, to how cool he is when he's when he's taking his kickouts. That he's fit to, to give it to his man at ease, give it to his teammates at ease at, at pressure situations. And you know that that's the that's a big part of what Stephen does. You know, under under them tough. In clutch moments, you know, he, he he does he does execute what he has to do, and um, that's probably set him away from the rest for for a long time there. And uh, he's been a huge influence on me in terms of that there. Probably a lot of it, just what he does in them big situations. Is there stuff that you can just copy? Is there stuff that you kind of can see? Okay, he's doing this. I can just copy that. Or do you have to always see what he's doing, take into account the context of the the players that he has outfield, and then go well. In my scenario, that would be something slightly different. Do you, do you, you know, do you have to remodel what he's doing in some ways? Yeah, well, I suppose you have to get your suppose, body position right to, to even hit the kick out to make sure you're you're assessing all options and picking the right one. The decision making is down to the keeper as well. The execution is down to the goalkeeper, but it is a lot of it is down to the players out the field, and that's something Dublin has possessed this last ten years. Is players who want the ball, players who are getting on the ball and making good runs and getting in the good positions to receive the ball. That is that is huge for a goalkeeper, and you know, it's either that there or it's a fifty-fifty ball out the field more or less. But Stephen seems to pick the right option uh, nine times out of ten, and that is a lot down to the players who are making the runs for the ball. I would have watched them a couple of times from the other end of the field when we played them, and you can see that the defenders are moving, making two, three runs to receive a ball at the times, and it's creating space for maybe a midfielder to pop into a space, creating a space for maybe a half forward to pop into. So, you know what? There's 12 players there who can who are looking to receive the ball from a kick out, and usually you can pick out the right option every time. Uh, hi, Rory. Um, I, there's been a lot of discussion, I suppose, over the last while, especially the two finals when Kerry pushed up on on the on the Dublin kick out with their with their three banks of four. Um, have have you ever have you seen much of it, or, or what's your your take on it as a goalie looking out on that? Um, how how do you beat that press, um, or you know even from playing against Dublin in the league, you know how do you beat their press? What's 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 your take on that? Yeah, it's. I've came across it once or twice already, and it's, it's definitely something very different to what I'm used to. Um, you know, every single space that you're able to hit is, is blocked up, so it's it's really up to the to, to players and to try and find some spaces. What I would have noticed with Dublin, what what gave them a wee bit of joy was an overload on on one wing and getting their their main fetchers over to that side. With Brian Howard in the first game, he um, he caught a lovely ball under the under the Hogan stand and and they worked the ball for Jack McCarthy's goal. But I would find that in those situations, no matter if you get the short kick out of the way, there's that many players up the field that it's going to be really, really hard for the team to get the ball out. Where Dublin are very good at that forward press. So I would find that that you try and get your players over to an overloaded situation where you try and get a lot of your players over to one side of the field. And you know you can either drag them players over to, to, to pull out space and maybe somewhere else, but most of the time you'll have more players over one side of the field and you just you're you're sort of hitting and hoping into that into that area that you have more players that usually win that break. That's what I would find would be the most uh, best part of getting out of it, but um I think with the short kick out it you're giving you're putting your defence under a lot of pressure. And with Dublin and that there getting the press up it forcing yourself into a mistake in a bad area of the field. So I'd find that maybe that overloaded area would probably be the best place to, to, to maybe try and beat the press at some stage. 
it does help when you've got Brian Howard who can like fetch the ball yeah. under the hug and stand, as you said, or take a short one with three lads around him and dance around all three of them in the space of like a telephone box. Like, holy shit, that guy's good. Yeah, yeah. big time. Um, and uh, just another, another aspect of it, Cluxton was probably one of the first goalies I saw, especially you know, in 2011 when you, you saw the free in the last minute. And it's probably you know, people like yourself who've, who've taken that on now over the last few years. You, don't, you, don't, you didn't see Cluxton going up over the last maybe three or four. Um, was, was he the, the kind of start of a change or had you always taken freeze before he had even made it popular by, by winning All-Ireland Finals doing it? No, I definitely I wasn't taking freeze uh, at that stage. It um, would have been Darren Hughes actually would would have been taking the freeze from on and old Scott Stein at the time. And uh, Darren would like to say, as he was getting older, the legs weren't just getting the ball <laughs> off the ground. So uh, just see, I would have practiced them myself, but I've never never been anywhere near taking them. And he just said, "Come up and take it in the league game one day," and, and I hit two, and just sort of took off from there a wee bit. And um, watching production down the years, just struck striking them over the disease was an influence, but. It, I was never anywhere near taking them for or Scott Steiner on him, but just came to a stage where you took one in a game and you scored it and you just continued to take them then. Um, and it all started in a league game for Scott Steiner that meant nothing at the end of the year and I sort of took off from there and sort of watching Stephen Close the way he takes his freeze, you sort of try to model yourself around it and we better work with the goalkeeping coach as well. Were you always a goalkeeper, Rory? Um, I was always a, not a great outfielder up until about four teams on the sixteens and then it sort of moved into goals. The other way more so. And when when that move happened, was it something that you embraced straight away? You were like, actually you know what, I could be good at this or were you ah uh, you know, maybe I'll do this for a year and move on to something else? No, it would have started off. I went into it and I wasn't really fond of it really when I got into it. When I was I was in and out at thirteens and sixteens, um coming in and out, playing out field but going to goals the odd time and wasn't really fond of it, but it came to 16s and I knew maybe goalkeeping was probably my best, best opportunity of playing playing football uh, regularly. And um, I just started to work at it a lot more. I got my first taste of goalkeeping coaching at County Minors. And, and once I got called into the under-21s, that's where I met Steve Williams. And he just, he'd done a lot of work with me and, and made me enjoy goalkeeping a lot more in terms of you know, shot-stopping drills, high-ball drills, kicking out drills. It made goalkeeping a wee bit more enjoyable. And, as the games progress now, I suppose goalkeeping is a lot more um, enjoyable and a lot more exciting for goalkeepers to do. There's a lot more for goalkeepers to do. Um, and I think that's down just to the way the game's gone, but you'll probably see a lot more goalkeepers coming through. But I've definitely enjoyed it this last this last number of years. At the start, I didn't really, but I got introduced to goalkeeping coaching and I got even the more enjoyable side of it. Steve Williams, the Dundalk goalkeeper, right? Yep. Yeah, so people will be kind of familiar with his exploits down through the years in their European run as well. And he's, I think he's, he's worked with loads of GA goalkeepers over the last while as well. So you can kind of see that the, the science is improving. Even in the, the drawn game, there's great shots where uh, Dublin have a press on and ultimately Stephen Cluxton ends up marking Tommy Walsh. It's like, you know, it's, it's a high wire act for everybody involved because if the ball gets punted over the midfield somehow, then suddenly he's in a race, a foot race with Tommy Walsh, and if he loses it, it's game over. Like, it, is that something that you are, that's one of your jobs as well if the team goes down to 14 men that when there is a press that you're coming out field to mark somebody? Yeah, I suppose a lot of it was down to maybe being down a player. Um, uh, where I was Dublin were down to 14 men. I think he, had, he probably had to come out to mark Tommy Walsh. Um, something I haven't came across yet, and that's something I hope I don't have to do, is come out and mark somebody. But, uh, yeah, I remember watching that there and thinking all David Morton probably had to do here was kick a ball at Tommy Walsh. It's hard to know whether Stephen was going to commit to the tackle or come back to his goals, but um, I remember watching it going, to Stephen Cluxon and marking Tommy Walsh here, just get the ball to Tommy Walsh, but... I think Stephen Cluxton, I think he plays centre half back for his club or something, so we might be well used to that situation. Hopefully, I don't have to. Hopefully, I not have to suck into that situation at any stage. But if I have to do it, I'd, if I have to do it, I'll do it. Yeah, Rory, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just trust me marking me. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons that we wanted to do this piece with you was because there is strong speculation that Cluxton might retire. I kind of started this whole piece with the discussion about the fact that he did the lap of honour. It's kind of unusual and. Even the way Jim was so effusive in his praise about him, the, it felt like they needed to tell everybody just how amazing Cluxton is. So I think certainly we're hearing that there's an expectation among some of his teammates that this might be the end of the Cluxton era. 
Can you put some of that in context for us, just how important, as a, as a member of the Goalkeepers' Union, how important Stephen Cluxon has been to Gaelic football? Yeah, that's obviously, it, it'll be huge news whenever it comes out, and I don't think, I, look, I don't, personally don't think it won't be, he won't, I think he might give it one more year, but, um, you know, the signs are there too, but, he will be a huge miss, definitely, Um I think, obviously, Emma Comfort is the next man in line, and he's had an awful lot of experience the last number of years through Leinster Finals, he's played some Super 8 games, he's played a lot of National League, so, they seem to be, um spreading them in slowly, but, uh just, you just watch Stephen Cluxon in them big situations. That big save against Stephen O'Brien at the weekend. The kick out to Brian Howard for Jack Coffey's goal in the in the first game. Um, you know, even the high balls, he's, he's quite dominant in them in the two games. He'll be a huge miss. Just his overall persona in the dressing room. Probably his um, just his confidence in the team. Is probably the yeah, confidence he exudes probably about the dressing room and that there. Um, no doubt, will be a huge miss. Um, but obviously, uh, what he does on the field would be probably what what Dublin missed the most. You know, winning kickouts in tough situations, and um, making big plays. And you know, it'll just suck me out of as a big as a big boots to fill. But um, you know, with Dublin, they've replaced big players down the years, and you know, they could do very well do the same here. Is he the footballer of the year this year? Do you think? It's a tight call. Tight call. It definitely would have him in the top three between him, probably McCaffrey and and uh, Conor Callan. I would be probably leaning towards Conor Callan, but I would definitely wouldn't have brought Stephen Cluxon in the popular year. He's definitely um, well in with a shout anyway. Yeah. The point you make about Evan Comfort is uh, obviously well, very well made, and we were chatting a bit about that earlier on. Like, in terms of the distribution that Cluxton has, um, presumably Evan Comfort can mimic that, but it's the decision making that you talked about when to hit it to the side that you're overloaded, when to take that risk, when to go short. How do you get good at that, Rory? It just comes with experience, and um, that's what it does. It comes with games. It comes with being put in those situations. You can do all you want at training, but you know the games are a completely different scenario. That's what I find. I would have improved just playing more games and seeing how teams set up and so on. And you know you can do it in training, but teams know where, what your systems are. Teams know what your strategies are. When you go in the games, it's it's where you're executing it under pressure with with crowd watching you. And that's where he's just ultimately going to have to get better at it. Is during games, and he's going to make mistakes. Stephen's made mistakes. We've all made mistakes doing it. He's just going to have to make. He's going to make mistakes. Going to learn from them. But I suppose that's where he's going to get better at it. Um, and in fairness to Dublin, in fairness to Jim and the team, you know he has been he has been uh, embedded into them in Leinster. You know, he's played uh, Super Eight games there. He's played uh, National League games on the big crowds. So he's, he's used to that in situations. But you know, when it comes to all our semi-finals and finals, that's where he'll really be tested. And you know, it's just going to it's going to might take a couple of years to maybe bed him in and, and make sure make him the number one. But it just takes games, it takes years of experience and look he's young, he's a young fella, he'll get that. Um, Rory, last time everybody heard about you around the country was because you'd uh, scored a goal for Scott Stan in, um, in, a, in a recent championship match. You weren't playing outfield, were you? No, no, it, uh, look, it was unfortunate enough, I took a, I took a free kick from, from a long way out and I sort of dropped in and, and fell in the net, it wasn't anything special now. Um, the way I heard it was that you dribbled up past about four or five lads and stuck it in the back of the net before no, blowing, blowing kisses to the crowd. No American, no American full forwards, but <laughs> scoring goals at the far end is an easy one, I'd say. Yeah, oh, well, I, look, if you want to keep telling people that, you tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I keep telling people that, so, uh, no, I'll just get out there, it was an unfortunate enough uh, goal, but look at uh, I wasn't even going to claim it, so I'll just stick to scoring points, with it. Yeah, no worries. Listen, Rory, good to have you on this morning. Thanks a million for talking to us. Thanks, Rory. Thanks for having me. Thank you. It's Rory Begg in there, uh, the Monaghan goalkeeper, talking about the importance of Cluxton.